Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the living organisms in this course. And so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the evolutions and we have discussed about the classifications of the animals. And uh, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about on what basis the animals are or the organisms are being classified. And then we have also discussed about the different types of uh, the criteria through which the, the scientists have actually uh, classified the animals, right? So they have classified, they have in our previous lecture, we discussed about that how the animals are being classified into the uh, starting from the porifera, philentrata, um, and then we have also discussed about the uh, platyhelminthes, eschehelminthes, uh, mollusca, uh, and then ultimately we also discuss about the uh, phylum core data and within the phylum core data also based on the different types of properties and different types of similarity and the dissimilarities the core data are also further divided into the many subclasses right or subdivisions. Uh, so, the idea of that uh, discussion was that we would like to say that how the similarity and the dissimilarity between the different organisms could be a basis for the classifications. To understand that same process, we are actually now going to discuss about the classifications of the plants. This is not an extensive or exhaustive class. Uh, discussion about the plant classifications. The purpose of this discussion is that we would like to uh, emphasize how the classification actually works, right? And that's how we have taken an example of the two different divisions, right? We have taken a, a kingdom animalia and all the kingdom animalia is being divided. And now we are going to take up the kingdom plantae. So initially, we, if, you, if you recall, we have discussed that the, king, the and organisms are being divided into the five kingdoms. We have said about the monera, right? So we have discussed about the monera, we discussed about the protista, fungi, plantae and the animal. And in the previous lectures, we have also, we were discussing about any media like the animals such as the elephants, what you see here, right? And uh, now in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about how the people have used the different criteria to classify the plants. But before we get into the details of the plants, let's discuss about the different parts of the plant and how they are actually being formed. So if you see the plant, what you see here is they have a very well defined structures or the anatomy. So starting from the bottom, right, so you know that the plants are present into the soil. They could be present in the aquatic plants. They could be uh, terrestrial plants, right? And this is, they are present in the soil. And within the soil, they have a, a well-defined vascular system, right? So that vascular system is made up of, of the roots. The purpose of the root is that they are actually going to uh, suck the nutrients from the soil. So they are going to suck the nutrients from the soil and uh, they are also going to suck the water, right? So they are going to suck the water nutrients. They are also going to suck the minerals 
and all other kind of things right so that material will actually going to travel all the way up to the top and the portion what is going to help in terms of the supplying the food material to the different parts of the body is actually being the part of the stem so stem is actually the woody part which is being present into the uh, plants right and their job is that they will be help in supplying the uh, uh, supplying the food or supplying the water right to the different parts of the bud so stem is nothing but a pipe like structure so that is actually going to supply the uh, food or to the water to the different parts and then we have the leaves which are attached to the plants right and the leaves are actually green in color right you know that the leaf is green in color and uh, it is green because it has a, a pigment which is called as the chlorophyll and the plant the leaves are also called as the uh, kitchen of the plant right so here the food is going to be prepared and how the food is going to be prepared remember that uh, we, uh, so food is going to be prepared by a process where the, it is going to utilize the light or the energy from the sun and it is actually going to prepare the food by the process which is called as the photosynthesis photosynthesis is a very complex um, process where you have the two phases you have a light phase and you have a dark phase and the light phase is actually going to be utilized for produce for capturing the sunlight from the sun so that it actually be able to capture the energy and that's how it is actually going to produce the nad and the nadph atp and the nadph whereas the atp and nadph are going to be used in the dark reactions and in the dark reaction it is actually going to take up the carbon dioxide from the environment and that's how it is actually going to produce the food so if you see the typical reactions what is going to happen when you are going to have the photosynthesis is that it is going to take up the carbon dioxide it is going to take the water from the uh, roots right and then it is actually going to generate the sugar in the presence of the sunlight now once the leaf is going to produce the food that food is going to be distributed to the roots to the stem and to the flower also so on top of this you are going to have the flowers so flowers are actually the sex organs of the plant right uh, not that all the plants are going to have the flowers but these are the few typical parts which are present in a typical plant right so flowers are actually of the sex organs and plant could be of the uh, either the separate male and female plant or it could be a, a bisexual plants so it can be a male flower or it could be a female flower and they will be together so male is actually going to produce the pollen grain and the female is actually going to have the uh, gynoecium or the ovary and that's how they are actually going to participate into the fertilizations and that's how the flower is going to give rise to the offspring so this is going to form the seeds then apart from that it also could have the fruits uh, i think if you remember the fruits are actually being uh, material where you are actually going to have the seed and the seed is actually going to be covered by the food material so that is actually been a way to protect the seed so that the seeds are actually going to be dispersed for a very very long period and in 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 uh, by taking the nutrition with because the food is there right outside the seed the seed is also going to be dispersed out um, beyond the the original location of this particular plant so now let's talk about so based on this kind of anatomical features or external features the see the flower the plants are being divided based on the two factors one the plants which do not have the flower fruits or the plants which the plants which do not have the flowers or the plants which do have the flowers because this is one which makes a very clear distinction between the two groups 
So what you have done is the people have divided the plant kingdom into the two groups. One, the plants which do not have the flower or the non-flowering plant and the other group is called as the flowering plants. Within the non-flowering plant, we have the many classes and the non-flowering class also we have the few classes. So within the non-flowering plants, we have the two classes. One is called as the mosses, the other one is called as the fawn. They do not produce the flowers, okay, which means they are actually going to have the reproduction by the other means. Now, this is the spore forming capsule. So what you see here is a typical moss and what you see here is actually a, a spore forming capsule. So in this capsule, you have the spores which are stored, right? And uh, the spores are getting, you know, when, when the spores are being stored in this uh, uh, particular organ, right? As, and once there will be a uh, uh, suitable weather, the spores are actually going to be dispersed and that's how they are, these spores will fall onto the distant locations and that's how they are going to give rise to the new plants. Uh, what are the characteristics of mosses? The characteristics of mosses is that they are actually the simplest plant. They actually do not have the flowers. They do not, do not have the very well developed vascular tissues, which means they do not have the roots and as well as they do not have the very well developed vascular tissues. Uh, they have a very simple stem and the leaves and they have the rhizoids for the anchorage, which means they have the rhizoids, right? Uh, like root like structure, but it's not a well developed or true root actually. So only for anchorage purposes. Then it has, it is forming the spores and the spores are then going to be dispersed by the wind. Uh, these are the damp terrestrial lands. So they are being formed in the places where you have the large quantity of water, but it's, they are not the aquatic uh, plants. So what you see here is a rhizoids, which actually helps to hold these end plants into the soil. Then it has a midrib. So within the leaves, you would you see leaf has a blade and it also has a midrib. Then it has a ros female rosettes and these female rosettes are actually going to produce the spores. Now let's talk about the ferns. So ferns are actually the, you might have seen the fern in your home, right? So ferns are actually having the rhizome, which actually are going to be present into the soil and the rhizome has the roots. So the clear cut distinction between the mosses and the fern is that the mosses does not contain the roots, like right, the well developed root, whereas the ferns are actually containing the roots. And then it has the leaves and, or the pinnacles and the these are actually being utilized for the photosynthesis and within the fern you have the spore forming units, which are forming units are present onto the back side of the leaves and that's how they are actually going to form the spores. These spore forming units are called as polypodium, right? Uh, the, what are the characteristics of the fern? They are having a well developed root and the feathery leaves and the underground stems. They have the vascular tissues for the transport and the support of the animal plants. They are spore producing organs on the underside of the leaf and they are actually going to be uh, formed in the damp and the shady places. So this is all about the classification and the discussion about the plants which are being non flower farming plants. Then we are going to discuss about the flowering plants. So within the flowering plants, you can have the two subclasses, one is called as the gymnosperms and the other one is called as the angiosperms. So gymnosperms are, they are actually going to contain the roots, stems and leaves and they are going to have the vascular tissues and then they are going to have the flowers as well as the fruit, which actually will contain the seeds. Um, so in the gym, angiosperm again can be classified into two classes. One is called as the monocot and the other one is called as the dicot. Now let's see the characteristics of the gymnosperms. 
they are the tall evergreen trees they have the well developed root and the woody stems they have the needle shaped leaves they have the vascular tissue which is used they use for the transportations then they have the cones with the reproductive structures and then they have the naked seeds in the female cones so they have the seeds but they don't have the fruits and then they are found into the dry places now let's talk about the another class which is called as the angiosperm so angiosperm as i said angiosperm can be further divided onto the based on the type of the seeds so it could be a monocot or the monocotyledon plant or the dicot or the dicotyledon plants so what is the characteristics of the monocotyledon plants so monocotyledon plants are actually going to contain the seeds which are actually going to have the one leaf okay and the leaves have parallel veins and it are herbaceous plants for example the grass and the maize so you can just remember by what is the monocot all the food grains in general are actually belonging to the monocot because the food grains are and monocots are having a very very unique and uh, leaves anatomy and because of that they are actually running a c4 cycle of the photo dark reactions and uh, because of that their food production is more because the c4 cycle is much more efficient compared to the c3 cycle so what you see here is a typical seed uh, when you grow the seeds what you see here is the embryonic leaf so it has only one leaf that's why this is called as a monocot and uh, it has a uh, one cotyledon right and uh, what you see here is this is the complete fruit so it has a fruit tissue seed coat endosperms and the embryonic shoots and the embryonic root so when you grow them it is actually going to give rise to the new plants then we are talk going to talk about the dicot so dicot is this is the you know evergreen plant what you have seen right and this is the what you see here is the veins into the leaves so they are actually arranged in a typical pattern and the dicots are going to have the two leaves into the seed and the leaves have the veins in their network these examples are trees and sunflowers and rose and what you see here is actually the two cotyledons so what you see here is this is a seed coat right and it has the two cotyledons so it has the uh, two cotyledons right one cotyledon and two cotyledon you if you want to you know see very carefully about the dicot plants and how, understand what is the dicot and what is the two and, uh, monocot and what is the di, you know cotyledons what you can do is just take the gram seed okay and soak it into the water okay for maybe like uh, 24 hours okay in a warm weather what you will see is that the the have you seen the gram like it's like this right okay so if you grow them it's actually going to show you the two cotyledons so it is actually going to those fleshy things what you see and that is what actually called is as cotyledons right and then it's actually going to have the embryonic stem or the embryonic shoots and then it also has the embryonic root and embryonic leaves and it also has the seed coat which actually be get dissolved when you put it them into the water so let's take a look at the plant classifications so plants are actually being classified based on whether the flower is absent or whether the flower is present so initially you have the non flower spore bearing plants or the flowering plants non flowering spore bearing plants can be further classified based on whether they have the root or they don't have the roots so if they don't have the root then you have an example of mosses if they have the root then they are been classified as the ferns similarly in the case of flowering plants they can be further divided whether it contains the fruits or not so because if they don't have the fruits then it is actually going to have the naked seed which is actually the present in the gymnosperm but they have the fruits which means they are going to have the fruit so that it can cover the seeds 
then it is going to be called as the angiosperm and the angiosperm can be one leaf plant or the two leaf plant so if it is a one leaf plant then it is going to be called as monocot if it is a two leaf plant then it is going to be called as dicot so based on this classification very carefully you can see that the monocots are actually the most advanced and most developed uh, plants which are present so with this uh, we have completed our uh, discussion about the animal uh, organisms as well as we have talked about the classifications and i hope you have could have understood the many aspects related to the classifications you might have understood the basis how which on which you can be able to do the classifications of the different organisms although we have just discussed about the animal classification and the plant classification to give you an idea how the classification could have been working and how the people are actually classifying the different types of animals but you can actually be able to utilize the similar kind of criteria and similar kinds of properties even to classify the bacterial species you can actually use that to classify the fungi and you can also classify the same way to the other organism which are present in the other kingdoms as well so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more properties related to the living organism in this course thank you